I'm Stephanie Gilmore, Curator of Collections at the Colorado Railroad Museum. Today, as part of our Small Wonders video program, I'm going to share artifacts and history about Colorado's famous ski train. You don't have to be from Colorado to know that the Centennial State is well known for its snow sports in the winter. However, you might not know that trains played an integral part in this history. The history of the ski train has roots all the way back to the 1860s in a town called Hot Sulphur Springs. With its many natural hot spring pools, Hot Sulphur Springs was a popular destination, primarily in the summers. In 1864, William Newton Byers, founder of the Rocky Mountain News, bought the town with the intention of turning it into a spa resort. He successfully surveyed and platted the area, incorporating it several years later in 1903. Although it was known for the hot springs, with an average snowfall of 64 inches per year, the town was destined to be a winter haven. Prior to 1900, intrepid skiers and snowshoers would make their way to the town during winter, but it was not for the faint of heart. Two of those bold skiers made a momentous journey in 1911. Just after Christmas, Norwegians Carl Howelson and Angel Schmidt rode one of David Moffat's passenger trains from Denver to Rollins Pass. From Rollins Pass, the two men skied 44 miles to Hot Sulphur Springs, where a winter festival was happening. It would be two months later, in February of 1912, that Howelson would help establish the Grand Winter Sports Carnival, the first U.S. winter sports carnival west of the Mississippi. It featured ice skating, tobogganing, and cross-country skiing, but perhaps the most exciting feature was the ski jump. An avid ski jumper back in his native Norway, in America, Howelson became known as the Flying Norseman, a nickname he earned when he worked as a stunt jumper for Barnum & Bailey Circus prior to coming to Colorado. Subsequently, upon reaching Hot Sulphur Springs in 1911, Howelson constructed the first ski jump in Colorado, where he delighted carnival attendees with his thrilling jumps. Later, in 1913, Howelson would continue on the Moffett train to Steamboat Springs, where he discovered even better snow sports conditions. He was so enthralled with Steamboat, he ultimately bought a ranch and settled there. Steamboat would become, and still is, the official U.S. Olympic Winter Training Ground to this day. The first so-called snow train would run in honor of the Grand Winter Sports Carnival's 25th anniversary on February 9, 1936. This train went all the way from Denver to Hot Sulphur Springs, and so many tickets had been sold, 2,200, that the Denver and Salt Lake had to run four trains that day. The Rocky Mountain News sponsored the trains. The Rocky Mountain News would continue to sponsor at least one snow or ski train annually to Hot Sulphur Springs until 1941, when the popularity of winter carnivals waned during World War II. A good friend of Carl Howelson was George Cranmer, who became manager of city parks for Denver in 1935. Cranmer was a driving force in creating the new Denver City-owned Winter Park Resort, where today a ski run bears his name. The resort officially opened January 28, 1940, and the newly coined ski train began stopping there to the delight of tourists and locals alike. In 1941, the onset of World War II would cause a temporary pause in ski train service. But in 1947, the Denver and Rio Grande Western acquired the Denver and Salt Lake and breathed new life into the ski train. From there, it would continue to carry thousands of passengers to Winter Park, Colorado for nearly four decades. In the mid-1980s, the cars and locomotives on the ski train became too costly to maintain, as they were the same cars used since the 19-teens. At that time, the ski train was taken over by Philip Anschutz, when he purchased the Denver and Rio Grande Western. Anschutz would again revamp the ski train by purchasing 17 new cars from Canada, using 14 and reserving the others for spare parts. This new ski train had its first run on January 2, 1988. 
The consist included three lounge cars with all sorts of delicacies for the passengers, celebrating this new version of an old classic. The ski train would run for another 21 years until March of 2009, when the cost of insurance became prohibitive and the new Denver Union Station no longer had room for the original consist. Running a shorter ski train would not be feasible as the cost to run it outweighed the revenue from it. Coincidentally, in August of 2009, the Anschutz Corporation was approached by a Canadian company interested in purchasing the train. Anschutz agreed to the sale, thus ending ski train service from Denver indefinitely. Colorado locals and tourists alike were disappointed to lose their beloved ski train after nearly 75 years of service from Denver. Six years would go by before rumblings of a new ski train began. Amtrak conductor Brad Swartzwelter is credited with bringing it back as he saw how much the ski train was missed. He wrote a proposal to Amtrak executives and in 2015, two test trains were run from Denver which sold out almost immediately. In January of 2017, the ski train made its latest debut and has been successfully carrying skiers and tourists to the snowy mountains of Colorado ever since. At the Colorado Railroad Museum, we have some great artifacts from the ski trains of the past, including coffee mugs and glasses from the Anschutz days, as well as playing cards. Two of our larger artifacts are locomotives 5771 and 5762, which ran during the Denver and Rio Grande Western years for the California Zephyr, the Rio Grande Zephyr, and then for just one season of the ski train in 1984. To learn more about these iconic locomotives, we invite you to view our big train tour about them, which you can see through this in-video link. Within our archives, we have numerous photos and vintage ads from ski trains of the past, which have been shown throughout this video. The museum has also published a book about the ski train, which we have in our library and gift shop. Last but not least, we are excited to share with you this wonderful sign, believed to be displayed in the ticket office at Denver Union Station beginning in the late 1940s and into the early 1960s. We hope you've enjoyed our brief history of the ski train and its related artifacts and archives at the Colorado Railroad Museum. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Commenting and sharing in particular may qualify as virtual engagements for important funding programs like the SCFD.